Hey everyone, this is Nick and today we're gonna make switching to Linux easier. The first thing we often hear about when trying to move to Linux is distributions. They're everywhere, everyone has their favorite one, every fanboy of one, badmouth the preferred choice of somebody else, and it's super tricky for a beginner to pick the right distro to get started with. And in this video, we're doing away with all of that because what a Linux beginner should take a look at is the desktop environment and not the distro that the desktop runs on. And what you should take a look at is your internet connection and what makes it lag thanks to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safing and you might already have heard me talk about their port master tool on the channel. It lets you monitor and control any detail of your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface through the use of block lists, profiles depending on your current connection and per app settings. It's also completely free of charge and open source. But Safing is also developing the SPN, the Saving Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once. So just head over to the link in the description below and download either the Portmaster or subscribe to the SPN. Okay, so first let's begin with a quick refresher. A desktop environment is basically your graphical experience when you're using your Linux desktop. It's the panels, the docs, the top bars, the default applications like the file manager, the email client. Basically, it's what graphically allows you to interact with your computer using your mouse and your keyboard. Linux has plenty of these desktop environments. The biggest ones are obviously GNOME and KDE, but you also have Cinnamon, XFCE, Mate, Pantheon, LXD, and a lot of others. The choice of that desktop environment is what is going to make or break your first experience with Linux. Choosing Pantheon over KDE could be compared to choosing macOS over Windows for a beginner. You get a radically different experience out of the box with its own strength, weaknesses, powers and limitations. Well, except for KDE, it doesn't have limitations because their developers thought that it should have literally every single option available in any other system ever. Now, not only does the desktop environment affect the look and feel very prominently, but it also defines the graphical interface guidelines that default applications will follow, the default applications themselves, and also the philosophy behind how you use your computer and the workflow to do so. For example, KDE's defaults are close to what people are used to on Windows, with its bottom bar, task list, main menu, or menu bars. GNOME has a completely different workflow, using workspaces instead of minimizing applications. There is no taskbar, apps don't have menus, it's just an entirely different way of using your mouse and your keyboard to navigate your computer. Okay, so desktop environments are important, but why are they more important than the distribution itself? Well, the first thing is most people conflate a distribution and its default desktop environment, and that's wrong. For example, people will tell beginners to use Linux Mint, because it's simple to use and it follows the same default layout as Windows. The thing is, Linux Mint is easy to use because it uses Cinnamon as a desktop. And Cinnamon you can also get on Ubuntu, on Manjaro, or a lot of other distributions. So what makes Mint special in that regard? The color green. That's what makes it special, all the green everywhere. Or, you know, nothing, literally, like Linux Mint is no different in terms of ease of use than Ubuntu Cinnamon or Manjaro Cinnamon. It's the same. Conflating the distro and the desktop only works for one distro and that's elementary OS because their desktop environment and the experience they provide isn't really available in other distros. You can install Pantheon on Fedora and other distros but it's just not as smooth an experience and it doesn't get updated as fast. But Nick, what about the work distros make to configure a desktop environment to work differently than the default, like Pop OS? Well, that's the point where it gets muddy. See, in some cases, I'd say the changes that have been added are enough to turn these customizations into another desktop entirely. For Pop! OS, for example, the Cosmic Desktop changes GNOME enough that I would say it's a different approach and a different desktop, even though it shares 98% of the GNOME components. I mean, we theoretically share 98% of our genes with pigs and we don't walk, talk or act like pigs. I mean, most of us anyway. Apart from these total customizations, the other changes that distros bring are really not that important, like what Ubuntu adds on top of GNOME or the Manjaro GNOME version. Virtually any desktop implementation from a distro can be replicated onto any other distro, which means that the distro itself 
doesn't really matter for the graphical experience. But there's more, because the desktop environment is what users will interact with the most and what will give them their first impression of Linux. Ok, the first impression will probably be the distro's installer, but that's not what is going to leave a lasting impression. What is going to make a beginner like their experience with Linux, or hate it and run away, is the desktop environment itself. If they decide to go with Manjaro KDE, and in their first hour get a multi-monitor problem, their panel is crashing, or they have weird performance issues, their first thought isn't going to be, oh, KDE on Manjaro is really bad. Their first thought is going to be, Linux sucks lol, never had that problem on Windows lol. Oh, and no shade on Manjaro KDE, or on KDE, or on Manjaro. They are great systems, they are great desktops, it was just an example, don't get all riled up. What makes the experience good, or bad, is the desktop environment. We could argue that the implementation of it, or the stability of the distro's base could play a role, but these things are really minor in the eye of a beginner, compared to the experience they will have with the desktop, its default programs, and the impressions those will leave. Like, I literally had a comment, two days ago, saying that if only Linux had desktop icons, they would switch from Windows. Linux has desktop icons on most desktop environments! Time to switch, buddy! On top of that, you can install almost all desktops on almost all distributions, whatever the default desktop you picked. You can choose Pop! OS and decide to install KDE on it. You can use KDE Neon and install GNOME. You can use Linux Mint and install Mate. The base itself rarely matters for all of that. Ok, time to address the main issue that is probably going to be raised in the comments, which is the distro's packaging system, the low-level tools, the base that they use, the update cycles, all of these things are important. And to that I answer, no, they're not. Not for beginners. For someone who's already familiar with Linux, these elements do matter quite a lot, just as the philosophy of the distro itself, the personal preferences, the experience we had with various other distros, it's all important. For a beginner, these elements do not matter at all. Someone starting with Linux won't care about BetterFS or X4, about Systemd or not, about using Flatpak, Snaps or legacy packaging formats like RPMs and DEPs. Ok, sorry, I couldn't resist calling them legacy packaging systems. I know it's going to piss off a lot of people, that's why I did it. I love those packages, let's move on. Beginners will rarely, or at least shouldn't have to, interact with these elements of their system. They should use graphical solutions that abstract all of these differences for them and make them basically irrelevant. When someone is used to Linux and they have caught the distro hub virus, then sure, they'll have enough knowledge to think that they prefer a solution or a tool over another. But to begin with, they shouldn't care about it and we shouldn't try to make them care about it either. See, there's a big issue in trying to grab those beginners and embark them in our little intestine struggles about packaging formats or system D or distros bases. It makes Linux look like a mess. It makes the community look hostile, it makes Linux look fragmented. It, it's just not a good look for anybody and it makes people run away. What we should recommend to beginners is a desktop environment first. Do they prefer the look and feel of KDE, of GNOME, of Pantheon, of Cinnamon or something else? Once they have decided on that, then they can be guided towards a distribution, even though they could pick any that use that desktop and they would be fine. Let's be honest, beginners will probably pick their first distro based on looks anyways. Plenty of people will try Garuda Linux because it looks very different from other distros, even though you could replicate that look in minutes on any KDE based distro. So should a beginner care that Garuda Linux is not unique at all just because it has that garish neon look? No. They shouldn't. They should just try a desktop, any desktop, any distro, and just use Linux instead of embarking in little squabbles about which is better. We should not try to push our preferences on them, we should let them make up their mind. So we should recommend to them a desktop environment and let them run with it, whatever the distro, instead of trying to push a distribution to them. That limits the choices to like 5 or 6 instead of 100. It's a much better entry point. Now this video was made possible by Slimbook and thanks to this offer code that's gonna stay right here in the screen, you can get 150 euros off your own Slimbook executive. It's a fantastic ultrabook with a great keyboard, with a fantastic display, good battery life, good solid chassis and with the discount it's really affordable. So 
Check the link in the description below and get your own Slimbook Executive while supply lasts, because it's not going to be for long. So thank you all for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't stay to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, uh, leave a comment, whatever. And if you didn't like the video, you can just dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. That always helps boost the popularity of the video, so thanks for that. And if you want to help me make more of these videos, you can always join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!